Everybody loves nature, majestic mountains, pristine streams, vast oceans, and a million other wonders. Love it though we may, we were once much closer to nature. When this country was mainly rural, it was easier to see how people were an integral, inseparable part of the natural world, one element of the planet's vast, complex ecosystem. Now, North America's population is overwhelmingly urban, and living in a largely man-made landscape, we lose sight of the natural world and lose sight of our place in it. We're all still part of that natural system, no matter how remote and abstract it may sometimes seem. And nature's limitless vastness will sustain us and our growth through countless generations as we continue to hold dominion over it and exploit it as we were meant to do. You can see how we got into this current situation. All those ideas, limitless resources, infinite growth, the belief that human beings had not only a right but a responsibility to exploit nature, were drilled into us pretty thoroughly for most of the 20th century. It seemed like a plausible course of action, too. There were only a couple or three billion of us on the planet, after all. It's such a big planet that helped to make it easy to ignore consequences or assume that, if there were any, their impact would be minimal or negligible. But watch the news or read the papers and there's another story about consequences every day. The number of humans has more than doubled in four decades. There are about six and a half billion of us on the planet now. And the Earth's population is not shrinking. And the growth rate of that population is not slowing down. We all contributed to the current situation. We can contribute just as effectively to the solution. Simple, easy changes and choices can have a significant, lasting, positive, and much needed impact. It's another one of the things all humans can share, in addition to what we already have in common that David Suzuki's about to explore and explain.